Quiet, please. Here we go. All right, so what I want to do today is kind of look at this thing called the radical. Okay, last day we talked about the square roots. We learned about something called irrational and rational numbers. Today I want to show us how we can actually use these numbers some way. Okay, now before we actually tell you what's going on, I want you to investigate. So I want you to take a look at this. And I'm going to ask you the following Does root 9 times root 16 equals to root 9 times 16? Well, let's take a look at the left side first, okay? Left side is root 9 and root 16. What's root 9, somebody? 3, three. good. What's root 16? 4. What's 3 times 4? 12. Okay, so what you just told me, the left side here equals to 12. Now, what about the right side? Okay, the right side is this ugly square root, which it has a 9 times 16 all underneath the same square root. So I'm going to ask you to do this first. What's 9 times 16, please? On your calculator, if you're not too sure. What's 9 times 16? 144. Okay. Can someone tell me what the square root of 144 is? Hey, look. They're the same. So in this example, the left side does equal to the right side. Okay. Now, let's try the next one underneath. Let's look at the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 64. And does it equal to the cube root of 27 times 64? Once again, what's the left side? What's the cube root of 27? 3. Thank you. What's the cube root of 64? 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Okay. Let's do the right side again. This time I want you to multiply 27 times 64 first. What's that? 1728, a big number, 1728. Okay. So, what's the cube root of 1728? That's also 12. Good. Because 12 times 12 times 12 is 1728. So, what conclusion can you make about this multiplication property of these radicals or square roots? If I gave you something like this, the nth root, okay, remember n can be any index, it could be a 2, a 3, a 4, whatever, okay, and I have a times b underneath. Well, what did I just tell you from above? I told you that you can split them up into the nth root of A and multiply that by the nth root of B. Okay? As long as those numbers A and B are real. Okay? Now, this property is going to come up very handy today because we're going to use this to do the following. I want to show you how to simplify square roots and cube roots. Okay? that are what we call not perfect squares. So remember last day when we talked about numbers that were not perfect squares, like for example, here's a perfect square root, root 4, but here we have root 12, that's not a perfect square. Okay. So we know that root 4 was equal to 2, but the question is what's root 12 equal to? And last day I just told you use your calculator to get a decimal. But today I'm saying let me show you how to simplify these and make them look a little bit nicer. Okay, so today we will use this property to simplify square roots and cube roots that are not perfect squares or perfect cubes, but have blank that are perfect squares or perfect cubes. I'll say that have factors, okay, that are perfect squares or perfect cubes. All right, now I've given you this perfect square chart for table again. I did this with you last day. I asked you to memorize some of these perfect squares. And I'm going to ask you to memorize them again. I hope you know these ones at least. The 1, the 4, the 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. I hope you actually have those by memory. okay? Because I'm going to actually show you why or how we're going to use those perfect squares to help us simplify. Okay? Here's example number 1. I'm going to ask you to simplify root 72. Okay? I'm not going to say to you, hey, do this for me, please. Go ahead and type in 72 and get the decimal. I don't want the decimal anymore. I don't want decimal. I want a simplified form of this square root or radical. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. And then after the two ways, you can decide which one you like better. Okay? Here's what I call the perfect square factor method. What I'm going to ask you to do is can you tell me what 72 is equal to? What two numbers multiplied together give you 72? And not only that, I want you to find which perfect square number multiplies into 72. So let's think about this. Help me out, somebody. What times what gives you 72, first of all? 72 and 1, yeah, but is one of those a perfect square? 
No. Eight and nine I heard. Okay. So let's do this. Eight and nine. Now, why do I like eight and nine? Because nine is a perfect square. You see how this is a perfect square? Nine is a perfect square. That's great. So let's do that. Let's rewrite root 72 as root 9 times 8. Now, what does this property say when I have two numbers underneath the square root? I can rewrite it as two separate square roots. So what I'd like us to do now is I want you to rewrite this as just root 9 times root 8. Okay? What's root 9? 3. So this now becomes 3 times root 8. Okay, so I'll say 3 root 8. Which is great, because now it's actually in a simpler form, but it's still not simplified yet. Okay? For it to be simplified, this 8 must not have another perfect square factor. Now let's think about this. What times what gives you 8? 4 and... Two. Isn't 4 another perfect square? Yes. It is. So we have to keep going with this process. So let me ask you to rewrite the root 8 as 4 times 2. Okay. And remember we have the 3 in front, so let's just keep that in front. And once again, 4 is another perfect square, which is good, because now I can split this up and simplify even further. So once again, I'm going to ask you to work on this. We'll keep the 3, and I'm going to separate the square root into root 4 and root 2. Okay, Okay. what's root 4? 2. So there's another 2. So in essence, what you have here is a 3, and a times it by a 2, and then a root 2. What's 3 times 2? 6. So there you go. This is your simplified answer, 6 root 2. Done. Okay. Now, you could have done this one a little bit faster. You want to know how you do this a little bit faster? Ladies and gentlemen, remember how I asked you what times what gives you 72? And you told me 9 times 8, or 1 times 72? If you wanted to do this faster, I'm going to ask you again, what is 72 equal to? But this time, figure out which of these perfect squares is the largest one that divides into 72. Okay, so this is what you did. 9 goes into 72. Yeah, that's great. But is that the largest one? Let's think. Does 16 go into 72? You can use your calculator if you wish. Does 72 divide by 16? Is that a nice number? Oh, no. Okay. So it's not 16. Let's try 25. Let's try 25. 72 divided by 25. Is that a nice large? Uh, oh, no. Next one. 72 divided by 36. Yes. So if you wanted to do this easier, what I'm going to ask you to do is rewrite this as 36 times 2. Try to find the highest okay, perfect square factor. If you can find the highest one, then your steps are a little bit simpler. Because now, if I ask you to write this as root 36 times 2, we can separate the root by our next property, root 36 times root 2. And what's root 36, dear friend? 6. So your final answer is 6 root 2. Same answer, done much faster. And that's because you already found the highest perfect square factor. If you didn't, and you might have to do it two or three times, but if you do it, you can do it once. Okay? Any questions so far about method number one? Okay, let me show you method number two, and then you can decide which one you like better. Remember prime factorization from chapter three? Remember figuring out 72 and finding the prime factorization? What number is a prime number that divides into 72? Two, yeah. 72 goes into two how many times? 36. Keep going. What another prime number divides into 36? 2. 36 divided by 2 is? 18. Thank you. Let's keep going. What else divides into 18? 
two, sure. 18 down by two is nine. Nine goes into two, no, sorry. Nine goes into three, thank you. And then we have a three. So what you've done in this case now is you've told me that root 72 is the same thing as two times two times two times three times three. Okay, this is the prime factorization method. We're almost done, We're not done yet. Remember how in chapter three, what did we do with the square root? We wanted to find pairs of numbers. And what did we do when we found those pairs of numbers? We took them out. Well, here's one pair that we'll take out, right? Is there any other pairs here? The pair of threes. We'll take that out. So what you've done is you've told me that I'm going to take out a group of two. I'm going to write the two. I'm going to take out a group of three. I'm going to write the three. What's left over inside my square root? Two. two. What's two times three? Ah. Uh, same answer, 6 root 2. So in essence, you see how this over here, 2 times 3 times 2, was the same thing over here, 3 times 2 times root 2. Same answer. Which method do you like? Second one? First one? Okay. It doesn't matter to me. Just make sure you learn one well. Let's turn the page. Now, let me show you how to do perfect cubes, okay? And then I'll give you some practice with this. Now, same thing. I'm going to show you the two methods. And then afterwards, I'll let you choose which one you like. Okay? Here we go. With the cube root of 128, this is what I'm going to ask you to find now or figure out. Find two numbers that multiply to 128. But make sure one of them is a perfect cube. So here are my perfect cubes. The 1, the 8, the 27, the 64, and I'm going to ask you to hopefully memorize these ones up to number 6. So that's 216. Because I think you'll see those quite often. So can someone help me out? Which one of these perfect cubes divide evenly into 128? 64? Yeah. Let's take a look. 128 divided by 64. You bet. Good. So if you can find that out, let's rewrite this 128 as 64 times 2. And remember, this is the perfect cube, so you want this little cube root. And the same idea exists where I can split this up. So I'm going to split this up into the cube root of 64 times the cube root of 2. And ladies and gentlemen, what's the cube root of 64? 4. Yeah. So your answer here is just 4. And then I write down the cube root of 2. So 4 times the cube root of 2. This is the simplified form. Okay? Now, once again, let me show you method number 2. And then afterwards, I'll have some examples down here that you can try on your own as to figure out which method you like. Prime factorization, once again, means take the 128 and let's find the prime factors. What does 128 divide by? Let's try 2. 128 divided by 2 gives you 64. 64 is still an even number. What should I try to divide this by? 2. 32. 2. 16. 2. 8. 2 again. 4. 2 again. To two. And we'll stop at that too because the last number here is prime. We're good. Oh boy. So I guess that means the cube root of 128 is equal to the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. How many twos? I'm getting, I'm getting lost here. How many twos? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have to have seven twos underneath this square root. Or cube root, sorry. Cube root. I'm going blind with all these twos. Now, remember how in the previous one, when we did the perfect square, what did I look for? I looked for pairs of numbers, right? Because a square root, you're looking at two numbers. 
The cube root. What am I looking for now? Katrina, yeah. Sorry? Cubed, yeah. So triplets. I'm looking for triplets. Let's see if you can find a group of three that are the same thing. I found a group of three here. There's one I'll take out. Any other group of threes? One more group of two. Okay, I'll take out. So that means I have now two, that's the first group, times another two, which is the next group, and then what's left over underneath my cube root here? A two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what's two times two? Four. So I guess your answer in simplified form is 4 times the cube root of 2. Same thing. So ladies and gentlemen, I've showed you two different ways. They both get the same answer. It's up to you which one you like. We'll give you some practice in two seconds. But before I give you some practice, let me just complete this little blurb underneath. It says in the previous two examples, the root 72 and the cube root 128 have special names. They are called what we call entire radicals because everything is underneath that square root symbol. Okay? Whereas when I asked you to simplify and I got a number times the square root symbol, these are called mixed radicals. Okay? And mixed radicals okay, are always written in what we call simplest form. Simplest. S I M P L. I E S T form. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like us all to do right now is take a look at exercise A, and I want you to write this as a mixed radical. Okay? So, you choose whichever method you like. If you like the perfect square one, go ahead and do that. If you like doing the prime factorization, do that. And then afterwards, we'll try parts B, C, and D. Now, for B, don't freak out about this 6. Just worry about the root 27 first, and I'll show you how to deal with 6 afterwards. Okay? I'll give you a few seconds right now. Go ahead and try these on your own, please. Okay. Um, by the way, those of you who did the perfect square method, the largest perfect square is actually 36. So I saw this, and then I saw most of you write down root 36, which equals to 6, 6 root 5, you're done. Okay. Those of you who did 180 with the prime factorization, I saw you do this, 2, 2, and then you got down to here, you did 3 and then a 3 and a 5. If you did it this way, remind yourself, please, to look for pairs. Okay? So here's a pair. Here's another pair. We take those out. That's 2 times 3 with the leftover of a root 5. And 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 root 5. How many of you got 6 root 5? Yay! Good. Okay, let's do B. I told you for B to ignore the 6 first. Let us just work with the root 27. Can someone simplify that for me? If you're doing the perfect square factor, what does that equal to? What times what gives you 27? 3 and 9, thank you, or 9 and 3. And therefore, if I were to split that up, you get root 9, which is 3, and you get a root 3 next door. So root 27 is just 3 root 3. Now, how would I do 6 root 27? Well, 6 is still there. What's my root 27? Well, that's just my 3 root 3 now. So what's 6 times 3? 6 times 3 is 18. Yeah, so your answer here is just 18 root 3. That's it. Okay, so don't freak out about the number in front. Just do the square root part individually first. Find the simplified form and just multiply that by the 6 in front. So in this case, the 6 times the 3 that's 18. 18 root 3 is your answer. Yep. This is multiplication, right? Brackets only multiplication. 6 times 3 is 18. Yeah. Don't multiply inside the square root. Just multiply the outside parts. Okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Part C. Okay? Part C. Part C. Help me out with this one. Did someone do the prime factorization method? Can I do it anyways? Sure. Both ways or always or what? Both ways or which way? Prime. Prime. Okay. I think it's even. My favorite number is 2. 54 to I2 is 27. 27 is not even. So what do I do next? Good. Don't cry. Go with 3. 9, 3, and 3. So 
what I'm going to ask you to do is rewrite the cube root of 54 as the cube root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And because it's a cube root, I'm looking for not pairs, but triplets. Yeah, triplets. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's a group of 3. Let's take it out. So I have now 3. And what's left over on the inside? Just a 2. But don't forget, this is the cube root, so put a little 3 here to represent a cube root. There you go. Okay. Yes, Suleiman. You could go further here and make it a one, but what's the point of that? Because you're just doing extra work for <laughs> for a one, and root one is just one. So you could, but you don't need to. Okay. All right, dear friends. What about D? This is a challenge. This is now the fourth root. So. For those of you who like prime factorization, let's prime factorize this again. 64 divided by 2 is? 32. 32. Divided by 2 is? 16. Help, help. I can't go that fast. Wait, wait. 2 and 2. Okay. Okay, so what's this become? The fourth root of how many 2's here? Good. The fourth root. I don't want... Oh, I need one more. Sorry, getting too excited. Okay, the fourth root, don't want pairs, don't want triples, what do I call four things together? Quadruples. Quadruples, nice. Take four of the same and take them out. So in this case, you have a two on the outside, and what's left over on the inside then? A two times two is still left over on the inside, so that just becomes the number four. So there you go. Two times the fourth root of Four. Done. Feel pretty good so far? Yeah? Okay. Let's do this word problem underneath, and then we'll move on to the next part, and then we're almost done. Today will be a quick lesson. I won't take the whole period. But I shouldn't say that, because sometimes I tell you that and I do, so that's bad. Anyways, can you draw me a square, please? Yay, there's my square. It says express the side length of a square with an area of 864 centimeters as a radical in simplest form. So you know what I'm saying? I'm saying this. Here's a side S. This is side S. Because it's a square, they're always equal. And how, about, how do I find the area of a square? Area is equal to S times S or just S squared. What's the area of the square? Yeah, and it's 864. So that equals the S squared. And I want you to find the side length. So I want you to find S. What do I do if I want to get rid of that square? Square root it. Thank you. Technically, I should have a plus or minus, but don't worry in this case because it's just a positive number. So now I'm asking you, well, S is just the square root of 864. I don't want a decimal because I said I want a radical in simplest form. Guess what? Let's go ahead and take this root 64 now and simplify it. Whichever method you like, highest perfect square factor or using prime factorization. Go ahead, have some fun. Let's see if you can simplify root 864. By the way, did any of you use the perfect square factor for this one? Because it was too big? So all of you did the prime factorization? Okay. Uh, help me out. 2, 432. Help. Help. Slow down. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Okay. So I'm thinking here, hmm, here's a group of twos. Here's a group of twos. Here's a group of threes. So that's two times two times three. And then what's left over on the inside? I've got a two and a three, which is six. Did you all say 12 root six? You'd be wrong. Because you forgot your units. No, 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 your units. <laughs> Centimeters. There you go. That's good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Turn the page. You know what? We've done things forward. We went from entire to simplified. Guess what I want to do next? Let's go backwards. So let's convert from mixed into entire. 
So now I'm saying, let's put everything underneath the square root, okay? No more of this number outside the square root, number inside the square root. Well, this is not too hard, is it? Look at 6 root 5. Didn't you see this question before? 6 root 5. Hey, that was the answer to exercise here, 6 root 5. So I'm asking you to go back up to root 180. That's all I'm asking you to do. Well, how do I get root 180 from this? Tell me. Yeah. Okay, well, you understand this is actually 6 times root 5, right? It's just multiplication. Can you rewrite 6 as a perfect square? What square root gives you 6? 36, right? 6 squared is 36. So now I'm just going backwards. I'm saying, okay, well, 6 is root 36. The root 5 is still root 5. And then that property says I can put them together. So what's 36 times 5? 180. There you go. Here's your entire radical. Done. Okay. All right, let's do B together. 8 root 2. What can you tell me about the number 8? What is that equal to as a square root? 64. I like that. And I got a root 2. Two square roots, I can put them together under, not underneath one big square root. What's 64 times 2 then? 128. Done. Okay. Now, the next one's get a little bit more tricky, but nonetheless, the idea is the same. Let's not worry about that negative sign right now, okay? Because this just means negative 1 times 1.5 times root 10. Can someone help me out and figure out what square root is equal to 1.5? 2 point what? <coughs> How'd you get that? Calculator? What are you doing in calculator? <coughs> you just do 1.5 times? 1.5. Good. That's it. Just like over here, 8 became 8 <coughs> times 8. So over here, 1.5 times 1.5. What's 1.5 times 1.5? 2.25. Sounds good to me. So once again, you're just changing all of these into square roots. We'll leave the negative 1 as is in front. Okay. And I'm going to ask you now, let's combine this together under one square root. So 2.25 times 10. What's 2.25 times 10? 22.5. So I guess we've got negative in front, the negative 1, with a square root of 22.5. And that's the answer that I would like to see. Okay. How are we feeling so far? Good? All right. It's always good to have a good feeling in math class. Very rare, I know, but nonetheless, good. Okay, a few more, and then we're almost going to be done. Two times the cube root. Did you hear me say that? The cube root of four. Yes, Mehdi. Go ahead. So... Ladies and gentlemen, what should I rewrite this 2 as? Should I use a square root? Not in this case, because I want everything to be a cube root. So tell me here, what cube root gives me the number 2? 8, yes. Okay. So we've got 2, which is the cube root of 8. We've got the cube root of 4. Once again, when the roots are the same, we can combine them underneath. So what's 8 times 4? That's root 32. So this is just the cube root of 32. Done. Okay. All right. Let's do E together, and I'll let you try F on your own. Okay. You see this is the fourth root? So I'm going to ask you to change the 7 into a 4th root. Uh, I don't know how to do this one without the calculator, so I'll use my calculator. Can someone help me out? What should I do with my calculator? 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. Right. 
Whoa. 2,401. So the fourth root of 2,401 is equivalent to 7. So now go ahead and figure that out. And what's 2,401 times 3? Uh, I don't know either. Actually, I do know. 7,203. Done. Okay. All right, you try part, this should not be C, this should be part F, sorry. You try part F now on your own. Can someone help me out for part F? What's the fifth root for 3? 243. Yeah. And then we'll multiply that by 2. What's 243 times 2? 46. Bravo. Done. Okay, one more question for today, and then we'll be done. Yay? Yay? Yeah. All right. Why would I show you how to go from simplified form to this mixed form? Well, this is why. I want us to now compare these radicals, okay? Now, without a calculator, okay? Without a calculator, no calculator, okay? This could be a no calculator question on your provincial exam. How would you arrange these numbers from least to greatest? Now, when you try to compare things, you have to make them look kind of alike, right? You need to try to be almost the same. They look alike. So my suggestion to you is why don't we rearrange things to make them look the same? Why don't we just rewrite them all as mixed radicals? Because if they all look like mixed radicals, not mixed radicals, sorry, entire radicals, ah, sorry, entire radicals, because if we just have one number underneath the square root, I think it's pretty easy to compare which number is bigger, which number is smaller. Okay, So let's rewrite all as entire radicals so that we can compare them easily. Okay. So the goal here is to let's write them and make them look the same and then we'll compare. Okay, let's look at the 5. What's 5 as a square root? 25, with a big yawn. Thank you. Okay, how about 4 root 3? Well, what's 4 as a square root? 16, good. So root 16 times root 3, that simplifies to... What's 16 times 3? Um, calculator, not... Oh, no, no calculator. Oh, sorry. 48, yeah. No calculator, I said. How are you supposed to do that? 16 times 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. Anyways, how about 3 root 7? What's 3 as a square root? 9, thank you. What's 9 times 7? Please tell me you know that one. Yeah, 63. <laughs> Root 60. How do I simplify that? Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I want things as an entire radical? It already is an entire radical. Don't do anything to it. Leave it. Unless you want to do more work. But who wants to do more work? And then the last one, 2 root 3, the 2 is the same thing as the square root of... Four, okay, good. Three, so that's root 12. Okay, so now if you were to look at root 12, root 60, root 48, root 45, which one is the smallest? Root 12, okay, so root 12 is the smallest. And I'm going to use this inequality sign, less than, okay, smallest. What's the next smallest one going to be then? Root 25, good. The next smallest after that, yeah, root 48. The next smallest after that, root 60. The next smallest after that, which is the largest, root 63. Now, because the original questions were not written in this format, I would like you to rewrite them in the original format. So what was root 12 again? Oh, that was 2 root 3. 
What was Route 25 again? Oh, that was 5. What was Route 48 again? Oh, that was 4 Route 3. What was Route 60 again? Oh, that was Route 60. So let's leave it as Route 60. And then Route 63, that's just 9. Oh, sorry, 3 Route 7. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's done. I've got one challenge question underneath here. Uh, if you want to do the challenge question, I'll let you try that, and I'll come around and help you to double check if it's right. Otherwise, here's the homework for today. It's just this stuff here. Okay. It looks like a lot, but it's not. It's pretty straightforward to do. By the way, I don't know if you remember, but I did assign homework last day too. this stuff. If you haven't done that yet, then please work on that as well. Okay? Okay? All right.